Hello artists, thank you for joining me in the studio today and um, welcome into my world of color. I'm really excited to share this lesson with you. Artists need ideas of where to get new color palettes when they get in a rut. Uh, I'd like to discuss with you a little bit about how I come up with those palettes and also um, understanding color better so that you can create clean, clear colors and discover your favorite color palettes for yourself, all right? So that's what um, I'm introducing you today is my color method, which is learning how to see the colors for yourself and mix them. And that way you will have a better concept of what color means, how to see color, discover colors for yourself. And when you have a color palette in front of you, do you know how to mix those colors? Do you know how to find those colors? Can you see if it's a warm or a cool color? Do you understand how, what the ratio is of yellows, blues, and reds in each color that you're choosing to use in your color palette? By understanding those concepts, I think that you have more power in understanding color harmony and how to make your own palettes. So I'd love for you to join me on this journey today. All right, artists, I'd love to start by talking about paint and paint colors and the supplies that you're gonna need in order to create your own color palette. First, let's talk about paints. I love acrylic paint and I love high quality acrylic paint because high quality acrylic paint like golden paints have more pigment in them. For this project though, feel free to get yourself some Liquitex Basics. Any paint that's just a few dollars a tube is gonna be a student grade, which means it has less pigment and a weaker binder. Now they work okay, but if you really are interested in honing in your painting skills, start even in the, as a beginner, start with the good paints because it's gonna be easier to paint. But that being said, let's put these away and let's just focus on the golden paints. And now I have four different sets of paints here and they're all a, a form of red, yellow, and blue. I've started using printer's colors. So what your magazines and your ads are printed in, they're in the C CMYK color range, which is cyan, uh, magenta, yellow, and black. Well, black isn't a color that I need to use very often, but using primary cyan, primary magenta, and primary yellow make a huge difference in being able to mix up really clear, beautiful, crisp colors. Traditionally, especially if you go back to the Renaissance, colors that, that the artists used to use would have been more natural colors like cadmium red, which I only have a pyro red here, but a cadmium red, ultramarine blue, and a cadmium yellow. Um, and that was a traditional primary colors that were used really quite until quite recently. Even this is what's been taught in school. But honestly, I want to remind you that primary means a combination of any three blue, red, and yellow. So I also have azurite hue, yellow ochre, and alizarin crimson. And I also over here have Hansa yellow light, quinacridone magenta, and phthalo blue. So feel free to use the colors that you're most interested in. However, it's very important to note that the results may vary. So artists, what do I mean by results may vary? This is a demo that I did to show you an exact example of what happens when you choose different primary colors as your foundation. Here I used phthalo blue, quinacridone magenta, and Hansa yellow light, and I got myself this really vibrant color wheel, like really saturated colors, bright, bright greens, bright oranges, and very, very beautiful purples. However, when I used the yellow ochre, alizarin crimson hue, and azurite hue, I had this very muted palette. Not one of them is better than another. It's just a matter of preference. So I'm showing you the results. And a traditional color palette of um, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow is going to create a color wheel that's kind of like this here, a little bit earthier, a little bit more muted than the more saturated color wheel here. You can choose any three primaries. Now we're gonna go back to the ones that are actually labeled primary and use them. And that would be, like I said, these are my favorites right here. Primary cyan, primary magenta, and primary yellow. So are you ready artists to mix this palette up? Now I know that, that creating a color wheel seems like it's old school elementary but I cannot implore you enough 
This is essential for your art making. Artists, you need something a little heavier for your acrylics. Our primary colors, like I mentioned, primary yellow, primary magenta, and primary cyan. Uh, several different paint companies do make these colors. So the closest that you can get to this for this particular project would be great. If not, like I said, use any yellow, red, or blue. Now let's talk about these palette knives. I have a bunch of different palette, palette knives. These ones, this size, it's kind of a two inch size, that's perfect for mixing with. If you have one that is teeny like that or really large like that, those aren't the right ones for mixing with. These are meant for painting with. There are artists who choose to forego the brush and go for palette knives for painting, but that won't work for mixing. So get yourself one that's just kind of a medium size like this and roundy, all right? And we're gonna use that for mixing up our colors. It's a lot better than if you use a paintbrush. If you use a paintbrush to mix your colors, you may end up with too much paint down here in the ferrule and it could ruin your brush and waste a lot of paint. But make sure you have a paintbrush on hand so that we can fill in our colors, all right? The first thing that I'd like you to do is at the very top, this first one here, we're gonna mark this for yellow and then count around four and on this fourth one we're gonna mark red and then go around and we can mark blue now when you do this it's gonna help you place the colors properly before you finish all the mixing so let's go ahead and do that right now so we don't um, forget where the primaries go all right um, so there's my yellow make sure that you have some water on hand and a and a rag so that you can continue to keep your brush clean in between. Um, it's really important, otherwise you're gonna cross contaminate and this won't be very clear of a color wheel. Here we go. So now I'm filling in. Now this magenta looks red, especially on video. So one thing that sometimes I do, just to give it a, so that the artist's eye can see that it is um, actually um, more, pinkish than it is reddish is I add a little bit just a tad bit so that you can see and that way when I put that there you'll be able to compare it with your naked eye to the other colors that we mix there we go all right and some blue all right artists now we get the fun part which is the mixing Get that little handy dandy palette knife. Make sure that you clean it off thoroughly because we don't want that mixing up. I have some old t-shirts here that I cut up to use as my rags. It's a little more economical and useful and they last a long time. So that's a little pro tip for you artists. Now we're gonna work clockwise. I always put yellow at the top and blue and red here. And the reason I do that is because I also am thinking about my values as I create my color wheel. So my lightest colors are at the top and my darkest colors are at the bottom. And that helps me also later when I'm trying to choose a color to create good value for my um, paintings. So our lightest colors, we're gonna start, take a chunk of that yellow that you squeezed out there. And we're gonna mix a very, very light orange or warm yellow, either way that you look at it. And you just need a teeny bit. Now, I wanna show you how little, look at that. Just a teeny bit, that might even be too much. You don't need much to start. It's always easier to add a little bit more than it is to use up all your yellow paint and add more yellow paint. So we're gonna start with that. Now watch how I hold this. I'm holding it more like, you know, meat and potatoes, fork and knife, right? I'm not holding it like a dainty little teaspoon to stir. This is not how we mix because you're not gonna be very effective. Hold it like this and smush it. That's a technical term, I promise you. Just kidding, I made that up. Just smush it. We're smushing it and mixing it at the same time and pushing it back and forth on our, I'm using this palette paper here. You could use any palette that you want. Um, and then we've got ourselves a perfect little mix, right? All right, now I'm just gonna divide this. Now, technically you could add more yellow and a lot more of the magenta in order to create the next color of darker orange. But I've found that if I just take a little bit of that and add a little bit more magenta, I'm getting there much more quickly 
And now I've got myself a nice pumpkin colored orange. And there we go. And then the last color that's really important to mix. Now this is really interesting. We've been told our whole life that no two colors make red, right? Well, I've got magenta here and magenta is definitely a pinkish color. It's actually a very hard color to mix, but red, red I can mix. And I wanna show you, I'm just gonna go ahead and put another fresh dollop of red of this magenta here. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of this yellow. And what it's doing is, is this cool color, cause it leans pink, now becomes warm and a lot more red by adding a little bit of yellow to it. And now we've got three really vibrant colors to mix, to put right here on our color wheel. So there you go, I just made red. The myth has been broken. Hopefully you understand that if you have magenta and you add a little yellow, you're gonna get yourself a nice fire engine red. Tomato red, whatever you wanna call it, but that red, that red we can mix if we have magenta. All right, now it's time to do a string of our purples. That's what red and blue make purple, right? I'm gonna add a little bit more magenta to my palette here, and it's the same concept. I'm taking this and I'm just gonna add a teeny bit of this blue, just a little, cause I'm trying to make like a maroon type color, just a slightly cooler version of the magenta. So the more I add blue, the cooler it gets and the closer it gets to purple, but I don't wanna quite make purple yet. I'm making more of a crimson color. Perfect, now we need ourselves some, um, same as before I can just take a little bit of this We'll leave that there for filling out our palette. And then I'm gonna add a little more blue and that way we can make a nice purple color. There are a lot of variations in between each of our primaries. So we've only got three slots here, but believe me, you could make a lot more hues out of the combination of just red and blue. Uh, it's just a matter of the proportions that you're using. But for this demo, obviously we have to pick and choose. And right now I'm picking two do three mixes. Well, I added a little more blue and I think that I'm getting it to where I want it to be, maybe a little more. So that's it. It's always easier to add just a little bit more than it is to have to keep using up all of your red. All right, now I've got it. Now, the next color on our color wheel, before we get to blue, is a really great, deep, rich, navy blue a little bit purplish what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to just take a little bit of the red so we're going opposite rather than red with a little bit of blue we're blue with just a little bit of red and i'm going to get this really great deep blue it's amazing how combining these colors actually makes them darker and richer so there you go, now I've got myself this really great darker blue. Now we're gonna move on to making our um, combination of greens, that's right here. I'm gonna clean off my palette knife again, keep them clean in between so that you're not cross contaminating. Now I have this blue, I'm just gonna add more blue because I know I'm gonna need a bit. And here's the magic. This is one of my favorite colors and I think it's probably universally one of everybody's favorite colors. Take just a dab, not too much, yellow. And we're gonna mix it in here. And by adding yellow to our blue, we're creating blue-green. It looks really dark on the screen or if it's just looking dark on your palette, which it did, it did make a pretty dark color. Here's how you can test it. Take a little bit of that white. It's making a gorgeous blue-green, kind of a teal color. Amazing, isn't it? I love it. I made that color myself. You can make that color yourself. You don't have to buy it out of a bottle, but of course it is easier to have it pre-made and bought already. Now I'm gonna just divide it and I'm gonna add a lot more yellow. I'm gonna try and make myself a nice bright Christmassy green. There we go, perfect. When we use like colors like ultramarine blue with um, cadmium, we're gonna get earthier greens. But with these primaries, we get these really bright saturated colors. And I love, that's one of my favorite things about using these primaries is that I have a much richer 
selection of colors. Now I'm going to add this yellow here and what's left on here is what I'm going to use to mix like a bright lime green. That's all I needed was a little bit of blue. Technically that's all I'm adding is blue, but since I had already made that green, that blue is mixed in with it. And there we go. We've just made ourselves another string of colors there. That's yellow and blue make green, right? All right, artists, so I've already added my primaries on here, and I'm just going to fill this in, and you can watch as I do that, okay? Okay. 